Hey you guys, meet baby Roman. I thought I'd take this opportunity while he is so comfortable and content sleeping on me to share his birth story. Honestly, for the memories, but also just to help any expecting moms out there that are looking to hear about a positive birth experience. My name is Stephanie and I am now a stay-at-home mom of two kiddos. My oldest daughter, Gianna, is just about to turn four and this little man is five weeks old. On my channel here, I talk about all things motherhood, giving you the best baby, toddler, and mom tips that have helped me on my motherhood journey in hopes that they will help you too. Every mom's birth story is super unique, and this is just totally an example of how birth could go. But yes, the second birth did go faster, and yes, I did get an epidural. And this is how little Roman came into the world. Roman's due date was May 8th, 2024. However, my water ended up breaking on April 16th. I was 36 weeks and six days pregnant at that point and I had a feeling for whatever reason my whole pregnancy that baby boy was going to come early his sister did his sister was two weeks early to the day and Roman ended up being about three weeks early so my water broke first again this is also what happened with my daughter and it's actually not too common with your water breaking as the first sign of labor it only happens in like 10 to 15 percent of women because usually can contractions will be your first sign of labor. So I was all prepared with my 5-1-1 rule again with contractions five minutes apart, lasting one minute each over the course of an hour, but didn't even need to worry about that because water broke and that was a pretty surefire sign that I needed to go to the hospital. But it felt wet down there and, and as soon as I saw everything, I just knew that's what happened. I did not feel my water break this time or last time because I was sleeping, but the evidence was clearly <laughs> there. So first I called George. My husband was already at work at that time and I just told him, guess whose water broke? And so he left work as soon as he could to just come back home. And then I called my OB's office like after hours line next just to confirm that yeah, my water's broken. Next step, should we go to the hospital? And then so she said, Yes, and then the third call was my sister because she was like our call person to come to our house and watch Gianna while we went to the hospital. I feel like so calm talking about all of this now, but in the moment I just remember my, like my heart rate going so fast and I was just like, shaking pretty bad just from being nervous because I know like the night before on April 15th I did finish a bunch of baby stuff that was on the list I like had clean bottles sterilized them cleaned out my car because nesting <laughs> but the one thing I had not done yet was like meaning to do that week was pack my hospital bag so I had nothing packed and Gianna woke up and just like saw me with the suitcase and like wanted to help and everything but my mind just felt so flustered and again I was so shaky <laughs> just like trying to hold it together <laughs> until George got here I remember like wanting to get to the hospital but also not feeling in a rush at the same time like once George got home he cooked us breakfast we ate steak and eggs because <laughs> I definitely wanted to make sure that I was well fed and I remember it hard trying to get ready because my amniotic fluid just kept leaking I thought all of it had gushed out like last time but this time it must have been some smaller gush and then just continued to leak so I was like had a pad on and then it would just get so soaked and flop out so I was just kind of going through that same cycle <laughs> of changing my pad until we left and then I I also started to get so emotional before leaving because it was gonna be like the last time of just the three of us with George, Gianna, and myself. I wanted to get like a cute picture of the three of us and everything, but Gianna, it was still pretty early and she wasn't really having it, which frustrated me a little bit, but I just tried my best to not take it too personally and just did my best to soak in the moment instead. It's just about nine o'clock and we just got to the hospital. Get to meet little man Sue. Any Dance. words of advice, George? Breathe in for four and out for six. <laughs> okay. Wish us luck. 
and then we got to the hospital right before 9 it was like a 15 20 minute drive not too bad and I was having zero contractions again just like last time so I was feeling pretty good walked into the hospital and got all checked in and then went up to the labor and delivery floor and then our labor room ended up being 332 which we thought was kind of cool because Gianna was born at 332 in the afternoon so once we got up there I just like continued to leak my fluids I felt so bad it got like all over the floor but what can you do and then the nurse hooked me up to all of the belly monitors for myself and then baby and got all of the vitals and good stuff like that and then around 10 o'clock I ended up getting checked and I was three centimeters dilated and 50% effaced I still wasn't feeling contractions at this point either so we did kind of have that conversation about starting pitocin which is like a synthetic oxytocin hormone to signal to your body to get those contractions going originally I kind of wanted to avoid this mostly just because I wanted like my own body to go into labor but then we talked about the pros and cons of starting pitocin and pretty much since my water had already broke there was like an opening in me and so like the longer I waited the higher the risk of infection so after I had lunch around 11 and then I did test positive for group strep B and started some penicillin for that I was also put on Pitocin at like level 1 the highest you can go is 20 so pretty low and that was honestly all it took to get my body in gear and going up to this point I had asked for a birthing ball and was just doing some like circles on the ball and like pulled up a couple of birth ball classes on YouTube that I followed and then I also had some like combs that I was squeezing into my hand some essential oils eucalyptus and lavender to attempt to calm me and then mostly my breathing techniques I loved watching Bridget Taylor's birth prep videos here on YouTube with my daughter and I watched them pretty much all over again for Roman's birth too I'll link her channel down below because just all of her videos are such a great resource for first-time moms or even if you need a little refresher course going into it but she teaches a lot about how to relax and breathe through your labor at one point though the breathing techniques were only getting me so far I somehow ended up in the bathroom on the toilet because sitting on the toilet is supposed to like help you relax your pelvic floor and allow your cervix to open and I don't know if it was like the pitocin just like making the my contractions stronger but I was so shaky and I was trying so hard to keep my legs open but they were shaking so hard and just buckling in and at that point I just it was too much pain for me to handle and I pretty much knew I was going to get an epidural it was just a matter of when during labor and at that point I just knew like I'm ready for it it was just too much for my body and my mind to like manage the pain and then so the nurse called for the epidural and at 147 in the afternoon I was five centimeters dilated 90% of face and in a negative one station so definitely progressing through labor pretty well and as I was waiting for the anesthesiologist or whatever the epidural <laughs> giver person is called um, I remember I was just sitting in the hospital bed and just in a lot a lot a lot of pain my knees just kept like buckling in and I felt like I had to like grab onto something so I was like holding on to like the hospital bed rails and it was like intense very intense like period cramp pain but also just starting to feel like a lot of pressure and every time like a contraction would happen my butt would like start to like slide down on the hospital bed because I was like trying to I don't even know like like I guess just like run away essentially from the pain major props to all of the moms who do go through unmedicated birth that totally is an option and I was open to the idea this time around however no matter how your baby gets here it is such an achievement in itself and so I did get my epidural at 2 13 in the afternoon George actually had to leave the room he did for Gianna too and I guess it's just part of that hospital's protocol where the 
partner support person leaves the room because they've had too many dads like pass out <laughs> from watching the needle and everything so like one person is already there to receive medical attention so don't need another person admitted to the hospital <laughs> as well right I'll talk a little bit here about the epidural because I know I was scared to get it especially with my daughter too so how I would explain it is that one you don't see anything so that's kind of helpful and I was able to hold on to my nurse's hands while those contractions were coming so that was helpful for the pain and then like kind of like what I felt like how I would describe it is between maybe two vertebrae like a little poke in between and kind of like a bubble started to like expand um, in my spine. It didn't hurt, it just more so felt kind of weird, but at that point the rest of your body is just in so much pain and then I started to feel the um, numbing going like throughout my body. I think it started on my right side and then eventually got to my left side. And then for my daughter, I had gotten an epidural six hours prior to her being born, but then with Roman, I got my epidural 45 minutes prior to him being born. So I don't know, maybe the epidural didn't have as much time to like do its magic and sink in all the way. Definitely not a medical person and couldn't tell you the science, but it at least numbed things enough to take like the edge off the pain and allowed me to be like more present um, while pushing. I feel like if I would have continued to go on without an epidural, it really would have put me in like a funky headspace and like feel super out of it compared to like with the epidural I felt more like clear-headed and alert if <laughs> not kind of makes sense. So at 227, I was fully dilated to 10 centimeters and then George called him back into the room at 228 and at 251 is when I started pushing. I definitely felt a lot more <laughs> this time. I just felt a lot more like a pressure on like my rectum and pretty much just everything down there and I kept repeating pressure, pressure, pressure <laughs> and probably like a couple other swear words too. But and then within three contractions, so you push during your contractions, Roman was born. I remember on that last contraction, one of the doctors, there were like seven other people in the room. It was kind of like quite the audience. She like looked me in the eye and assured me that this would be my last push and like just give it all you got, see your baby. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, you are a liar. This is gonna take so much longer. It hurts so bad. And I just did not believe her. But sure enough, after that final push, Roman popped right out and I felt every little shoulder and elbow and kneecap. Then like the umbilical cord, I just felt like this like squiggly little worm coming out of me. And the on-call doctor from my OB's office, she did like nothing and was just standing all the way in the back behind like a table and pretty much just cheering me on the whole time. Like, yay mama, you've got this. I was actually supposed to meet her Wednesday the following day for the first time like rotating through all the different OBs in the office and so met her a little early <laughs> giving birth and so yeah I pushed for like nine minutes and then the nurse quickly like let me hold Roman and my hands like cupped his little private parts I'm like oh my gosh it's a boy and I just felt so relieved to like be done with all the burning and the pressure and the pain and I forget how soon after but it wasn't too long probably within five maybe 10 minutes the placenta was ready to come out and the doctor asked if I wanted to see it and I'm not sure if this will be our last baby but I was like okay yeah sure I'll take a little little peek at it so I was just kind of curious you know it's been living inside of me for so long and heck I created it so and so I kind of felt it like just like slip right out and then it's it's pretty sizable like this big but the doctor was like playing with it and like opening it like a piece of meat <laughs> or something and so roman was born at three o'clock on the dot six pounds 12 ounces and 18 and a half inches long which was much more petite than his sister was so just holding him in my arms he felt so small and like i was almost going to like drop him just 
you know, very small baby from what I was used to. So that is how our little boy came into this world and George was just so supportive through the whole process, just being present, getting me food, filling my water. We didn't do anything much with like counter pressure or anything like that, but him just being present and available was super helpful. And then when push came to shove <laughs> during like all the pushing and stuff, he was just very um, supportive and was such a great coach just like last time too. So thank you for hanging out with us and hearing about Roman's birth story. If you have any questions, comment down below and I would be happy to answer them with my experience. I just still can't believe that I am now a mom of two kids, plural. <laughs> you can subscribe to my channel for more helpful motherhood videos and we'll see you guys in the next one. He did so good. Such a sleepy little baby. Oh, now he's waking up. Hi, Roman. Ah. <laughs> Say bye-bye. See you next time, guys. <laughs> See you.